All right, hello all you people out there. This is Michael of Two and a Half Studios, and welcome back to another Game Maker video. So, currently we now have enemies, and you can die, and that's that's that, that's kind of disappointing. You can't kill the enemies or anything. You can't jump on them. Or that happens. Um, you can't exactly shoot them with anything or anything like that. We're gonna do that today. We're gonna be killing these uh, enemies here. There's a couple changes I'm gonna make. This is gonna be more complicated than the last one. Killing enemies is unfortunately more complicated than killing you. That sounded really bad, but we're going to do that anyway. So, there's going to be two methods of killing enemies that I'm going to talk about here today. Or right now, anyway. Maybe later today I might talk about another method or something like that. I don't know. But, jumping on them, a la Super Mario, and, um, and shooting them with bullets. So, uh, let me see. I think I'm going to deal with jumping on the first because I won't have to make a separate spread for bullet, which is just so much work. But... Right now, in this uh, player step event, there's some code dealing with what happens if you jump on an enemy. Or if you run into them anyway, not really if you jump on them. I'm going to move most of it over to the enemy step event. The reason for that being that um, you have only one player and you can have multiple enemies. However, I'm going to keep this here so that uh, anytime you take damage, if your HP is less than zero, you'll die. And that can include things that are not enemies. That can include things like, I don't know, jumping on spikes or jumping into a bottomless pit or something like that. Although I guess if you were to jump into a bottomless pit, you just die instantly. But still, let's see where's the uh, where's the code. I lost my own code. Here it is. I'm going to be uh, control Xing that, and I'm going to be moving that over here. And we're going to put stuff in the enemy step event. <clears throat> and let's see if uh, instead of a place meeting enemy, we're going to say if uh, place meeting player, which I can spell. I thought I had R. And we're going to be saying player. Their HP is going to minus equal 5, not the enemies. And player at age speed is going to get multiplied by negative 1. So, I don't believe this has been introduced in this session of tutorials. You might have seen it before, it's pretty common in programming. Uh, the dot notation. What this does is this says that instead of, say, uh, enemies HP variable, you're going to be looking at players HP variable. And from there you'll be able to access uh, this, this thing here. Uh, you'll be able to subtract from it, add to it, multiply it, read it, use it for whatever you need to. <clears throat> it's really nice. It's one of the things that makes programming work, uh, really, because you do see it quite a lot in more complicated, not only games, but computer programs through various, uh, through various means. Now, if you jump on them, your vertical speed is going to be greater than zero. So if a uh, if, uh, player, their vertical speed, so VSP is... Uh, if it's less than or equal to zero, then they're going to take damage. Else, something else is going to happen. And what I think is going to happen here, you can kill them in one hit, like with the Goomba in Super Mario, or you can turn them into something else, like with the Koopa in Super Mario. I'm going to be saying, uh, your HP minus equals five. And I should probably, before I forget, uh, set HP as a variable in here. So HP equals 10 just like with the player and uh so your hp minus equals five if you're confused you can write self that hp minus equals five all it does really is similar to this it refers to an object and uh reads their hp variable and changes it and the object that it happens to refer to when you use self is the enemy that's running the code so this and this have the exact same outcome but this is a little bit easier to read in case you're confused um, a lot of other like computer languages have this as well. Uh, Java has the this dot variable equals whatever that you see sometimes, and that's used for various reasons. But yes, nonetheless, that is that. We're going to uh, if you're jumping on them, you're going to want the player to probably bounce up a little. So player the VSP. Um, let's make that negative four or something like that. No, negative eight because uh, gravity takes over quickly, and then. As always, uh, if HP is less than or equal to zero, because it's possible, uh, depending on how the math plays out, that you might end up getting, uh, say, negative one HP at some point or another, and uh, you'll want that to count as a death as well, then you just delete this instance. So, instance destroy. And this is just a fancy function that removes this instance from the game. So, uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. And if I were to jump on you, you see it bounce. That happened kind of quickly because uh, once again, 
gravity takes over. So I'm going to say, let's make this minus 16, like the, uh, the jumping thing, the jumping speed. And I bounce once, twice, and kill the enemy. Perfect. So um, that's what Instance Destroyer does. That's what happens when you jump on things. Now for the second method of killing enemies that I mentioned is a bullet. And I'm going to make myself a nice, uh, a nice new spray. I'm just going to call this dot. Uh, lowercase d because uh, that's how we roll. And let's see, edit sprite. And the size, I'm going to make this 4x4. Four four. And it's not really going to be dot, it's not really going to be circle. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to fill that black. And set the origin to a 2-2, two, two, which is the middle, because why not? And let's see, make a new object to represent the bullet. Because uh, it has a behavior, so therefore it really should be represented by an object. And you're going to make it sprite the dot. And... Okay, so... Here, when you hit, say, the space bar on the player object, it's going to shoot a bullet. Now, which direction is it going to shoot it? That's the question here. Uh, there's a few things you could do. You could take the uh, the direction that you're facing last and shoot it in that direction. I'm going to do what some PC games do and shoot it towards the mouse. So let's see, how about at the bottom here, you're going to say if, if you hit the space bar, you're going to create um, at x and y. What are those fancy things? Now, I'm going to want to change something with the bullet afterwards, after I create it, but if I were to do simply this, say uh, bullet and its direction equals um, the direction, let's see, point direction to get the direction between uh, its x and its y and uh, the mouse. Now if I were to simply say this, set the bullet's direction that it's moving in to uh, the direction between the bullet, uh, its x and y, and the mouse is x and y, uh, you can get the mouse's position on the screen, or specifically the mouse's position in the room that you're in, uh, with mouse X and mouse Y. It's quite nice sometimes, depending on uh, what you like to do. I don't usually make games that use the mouse, so I don't use it that much, but some people do, so this is something that's very good to keep in, uh, keep in mind. And uh, if you're to set its speed to... No, not seed. Uh, if I can spell anything today. Uh, set that to, say, 8. Actually, no, let's set it to 4 so that you can see what's going to happen a little bit uh, more easily. So, bullet speed is going to be 4, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to play the game. So, I'm going to be hitting the space bar, and you can see when I... Anytime I press the space bar, all the bullets in the game change direction and they fly towards the mouse. And that's not really what you want. Although, admittedly, it does look kind of cool. It looks like I have like a swarm of mosquitoes chasing my mouse or something. But we don't want that. That's not very good. That would probably break the game a little bit if you can have control over all the bullets in the room. And, uh, yeah, instantaneously. And that's what happens when you just use the object name as the object that you're, um, trying to control. Like over here, in the enemy stuff event, I, I said player.hp and whatnot. And that's fine because there's only ever going to be one player in the room. But if there are, for whatever reason, two players in the room, they would affect both of their HP. And if, they, and if one died, they both die at the same time. So I'm going to do something here, and this is my favorite thing in programming. I'm going to assign the bullet that we just created to a variable. So uh, we're going to say, we're going to say how about uh, B for bullet is instance create that. And this holds a value now. This is a reference to the ID of the object in the room. Every instance in GameMaker has an ID. If you were to mouse over one in the object tab in the, uh, the room editor, You'd see ID equals zero 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 or ID equals whatever that says at the bottom. I can read, and uh, each of these wall objects has one of them too. An enemy. It's rather like if you were to take if you were to create an uh, an object in Java or another object oriented programming languages, you would see its memory address. If you were to uh, say print it out in the console or something, here in this case, if you were to the game maker's equivalent to printing stuff out to the console. If you were to do that, so we're going to get a pop-up when you hit the space bar, and it's going, to, uh, it's going to tell us what the object ID is. So in this case, it happens to be uh, this, because it's the newest instance created. It's, uh, it's got the thing, and uh, 
yes, we're we're still chasing the mouse because uh, even though we have the object's ID, then you can't really do much with it. Now the wonderful thing about this, I'm gonna get rid of that because I don't want to pop up every time I hit the spacebar, is that you can treat it like one of these. So I can say b dot direction equals the point between uh, b dot x and b dot y, and I can treat it as its individual object instead of uh, the type of object in general for any of them that are in the room. So now, when I play the game and I hit the space bar, they go off and flying in their individual directions. That looks really hypnotic for some reason. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that. So that's a really important part of Game Maker. You will be using this if you make any game that's more basic than say running around and I don't know maybe jumping on an enemy. So this is a really powerful element of programming that's really good to uh, to know to use and also when not to use because sometimes you do want to say just uh, bullet dot direction equals whatever or for example when you're just creating one of these you can't exactly say uh, just an instance ID because that doesn't really have any meaning to Game Maker and it'll probably throw you an error message because it doesn't know what that is. Okay so you have these created now once again jumping back to the enemy step event when you when you run into a bullet, I don't think I need to explain this line of code again. We're going to say HP minus equals 5, and this is going to be your HP. It's going to be equivalent to jumping on you, because why not? If you want to make this really complicated with RPG logic like I cited before, you could have, say, attack powers and defense powers and all that fun stuff. And over here in the bullet, we're just going to say so that if, uh, if you collide with an enemy, you destroy the bullet, so you don't have, uh, you don't have it colliding with an enemy in every step of the game, and then uh, that'll be kind of broken. So you see I shot it once, the bullet disappeared, I shot it again, and that happened. Wonderful. And it wasn't deleted because the order of operations within Game Maker, dealing with uh, the enemy being destroyed before it destroyed the bullet. Yeah, so that's that. I've talked about uh, stomping enemies, as it were, and shooting them with these little tiny pebble things. I'm going to just make another one and uh, say run through this again. So this one I'm going to shoot, one, two, and this one I'm going to jump on, one, I kind of missed the first time, and two, and that happens. So, wonderful, we can kill enemies now. That's a pretty significant step in the path towards making a good game, isn't it? I'm going to end this video here, I know it's been longer than most of the rest of them that are made, but I'm going to end it here so that it doesn't keep going longer. As always, this file that I'm working on here is going to be in the description of the video, available for you to download if you want to and mess with it, or you can go and attempt to make your own, it doesn't matter to me. Regardless, if you have any suggestions of what you'd like me to uh, work on in the future, let me know and I'll do it. Read, comment, and subscribe, watch some of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.